Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 8th International uh, Symposium on Focused Ultrasound. My name is Sandeep Arora. I'm an Associate Professor of Radiology and Biomedical Imaging at Yale University School of Medicine. I'm presenting today about effects of prostatic calcifications on MRI-guided transduration high and intensity direction ablation. I'm thankful to my collaborators from Stanford University and UT Southwestern uh, for their data and also for profound medical scientists to help parse out the complex technical temperature data obtained uh, during this uh, treatments. These are my disclosures. Uh, quickly talking about uh, what a uh, little bit of background on Telsa Pro. Uh, Telsa Pro is a transurethral device. Uh, there are 10 ultrasound transducers, each measuring five millimeter, which are independently controlled and each give out a flame-shaped beam. The flame-shaped beam is controlled uh, based on MR thermometry. Uh, and also um, there are some rules which are applied uh, so that the T max does not get above 86 degrees Celsius and the T edge does not get greater than 55 degrees Celsius. Um, so the closed loop temperature control enables ablation, uh, which also the MRI thermometry data is utilized by the individual transducers robotically to modulate the intensity of the beam. Um, and also we can pause the treatment if there's any motion, read all the contours uh, before restarting the uh, treatment. One of the major things which makes patients ineligible for uh, TELSA procedure is presence of prostatic calcifications. The significant prostatic calcification of the device is three millimeters because less than three millimeters, we can position them in such a way that we can heat around those calcifications. Um, greater than three millimeter calcifications are harder to deal with. Um, CT imaging is currently the gold standard. Um, MR and ultrasound imaging are not there yet. In this patient, you can see that on T2 weighted images, the calcifications are not visualized. Uh, you can see signal dropout in the areas of calcifications on the anatomy images of the MR thermometry. The T max images of the MR thermometry, the uh, pixels, uh, you can see that after treatment, that um, enough dose was not able to be deposited beyond the calcifications um, in these patients. And there's more boiling in the near pixels near the urethra, uh, which is also problematic for urethral damage. Um, uh, this is uh, appearance of the calcifications on the post-treatment axial pre-contrast elongated images. And you can see that the under-treatment uh, with pers uh, persistent enhancement of the Issue beyond the calcifications on the post contrast enhanced uh, post treatment images. Um, so, we have started utilizing MRI guided susceptible to rated imaging for uh, imaging and uh, use MRI guided susceptible to rated imaging for positioning of the uh, urinary applicator. So, you can see that this is a calcification in the process, which is hyperdense on CT. On the MRI in the same patient, you can see the calcification as a was signal void on the uh, magnitude SWI images, but you see another signal void uh, here um, and uh, lower down posteriorly. So these act, um, uh, so, uh, uh, and on phase images, only uh, one of those, um, uh, the calcification pixel remains um, hypo intense, whereas the hemosiderin pixels become brighter. And that is uh, true for Siemens MRI based on the coordinate system they use. If it's a different brand of MRI, you have to check which coordinate system they're using, either it's right-handed or left-handed. Um, so because um, the, the look of the calcification uh, can be different uh, in uh, different scanners. So we studied the impact of ablation coverage based on thermometry. Uh, we divided the prostate into um, quadrants with calcifications and quadrants without calcifications. And we studied the maximum temperature and thermal dose deposited in those quadrants. We used two cohorts. Um, in one cohort, we was a post FDA clearance cohort, which used CT based screening with the calcification size cutoff of three millimeter. When in line with the lesion, if it was Outside of the lesion, higher calcification, higher calcification numbers was allowed if it was, if it was away from the lesion. And intraprocedural SWI was used to guide positioning of the therapeutic elements in respect to calcifications. Um, and we also compared the data collected during the FDA registration study 
the in which the calcification cutoff size was significantly higher, ultrasound-based calcification screening was used, um, and uh, no SWI-guided positioning um, was done. So results, there were 25 calcifications identified across 17 patients. SWI diameters were larger by median 22% in at least one dimension for all patients and in 42 out of 50 measurements. Um, with SWI-guided device placement, appropriate thermal dose was noted in quadrants with uh, and without calcifications, without any significant difference. And the, uh, and the uh, near boiling temperature uh, distribution was also similar with SWI-guided positioning. Whereas in the FTA registration study, uh, quadrant with calcifications uh, received significantly less dosage and near boiling temperature was seen in quadrants with calcifications with much higher frequency. Uh, we also noticed, uh, uh, calculated the median periurethral temperatures and median periurethral dosage. The periurethral area determined six millimeter from the uni applicator. Uh, with SWI guided positioning, uh, we found something interesting. Even though the temperature in the periurethral area was greater in quadrants with calcifications, uh, quadrants without the calcifications had higher dosage as compared to quadrant with calcification. And this was due to the fact that cancer was mostly located in quadrants uh, without the calcifications and more heat was deposited in those quadrants where uh, there was calcifications, where there were no calcifications. As in contradistinction for the FDA registration study, which was whole gland ablation study, uh, heat and dose was higher in quadrant with calcifications. Also noting the radial uh, peak temperature, the peak temperature was higher in quadrants with calcifications, but the peak location, the temp peak temperature location was similar with SWI guided device positioning, which was eight millimeter. In FDA registration study, the peak temperature was higher in quadrants with calcification, but uh, also the peak location, the peak location temperature was closer to the urethra, which has um, uh, implications on urethral uh, temperature dose. Um, in conclusion, intraprocedure SWI detected all calcifications uh, identified on CT, but it overestimated the diameter. Uh, even though it uh, overestimated the diameter, it guided effective device positioning, so you could heat around the calcifications, which are uh, three millimeters or less. Uh, use of intraprocedure SWI was associated with adequate thermal dose in the intended ablation zone, despite presence of small calcifications. Small calcification meaning up to three millimeter. Uh, CT remains the gold standard for pre calcification screening, and further studies are warranted to optimize SWI protocols, uh, correlate the size of calcifications on CT and SWI, uh, so that we can apply a reduction um, or increase the uh, you know with because of the 22% discrepancy in size. Uh, evaluate other sequences. There may be other sequences uh, which might be better than SWI and predict the impact of uh, the calcification, different types and size of calcification on ablation coverage. Thank you. This was, um, uh, thank you for the opportunity and thank you to the FTS Foundation for inviting me.